welcome to Cargill's Minneapolis Research and Development Center here in Plymouth, Minnesota. My name is McKenna Mills, and I am a dairy scientist working on a food applications team. Today, I want to talk to you about plant-based foods, specifically shuttable vegan pizza cheese. The market for plant-based foods is expanding rapidly, with consumers placing an increased emphasis on a plant-centric diet. Plant-based alternatives are appealing to a broader range of consumers, warranting little shelf space on the grocery aisle. As part of Cargill's dairy team, we are developing innovative plant-based solutions in a variety of spaces, including yogurt, ice cream, um, and in this case, vegan pizza cheese. Today we'll explore the work we've done, and I can't wait to share that with you. Our work on vegan pizza cheese has been focused around developing a shreddable cheese that fulfills customer ex consumer expectations for bite, melt, and stretch. Many consumers expect plant-based cheese to mimic the functionality of a dairy cheese. Today, we're going to be looking at the different components of a vegan cheese that help create those functionality components. The, fu the different components of a, of a vegan cheese are the starch, the oils, the gums and hydrocolloids, the proteins, salt, and acid. As we're creating this today, I'll be talking about why the important ratios are so important in creating the exact functionalities we're looking for. Today, we'll be focusing on milk of a, of a vegan pizza cheese and the bite of a vegan pizza cheese and how we can create those different um, functionality requirements that customers really look for in their pizza cheese. So starting to create this today, we'll first be adding our protein to this left thermal mix and our gum and hydrocolloids to the right. The reason you split the two components at the beginning of this, of this creation for your vegan pizza cheese is that it is very important that all of your ingredients get fully hydrated. So I have split water into both of these thermal mixes so all the ingredients have an opportunity. So you'll go ahead and you'll add your hydrocolloids into this one. The hydrocolloids are very important because they help create a thermal reversible gel that can help create milk on your vegan pizza cheese. The hydrocolloids also help with shreddability and bite. Here at Cargo, we've noticed that it's not just one gum or hydrocolloid that create the functionality you're looking for. It's really multiple used at different ratios that can create the expectation that customers really want in their vegan pizza cheese. So here I'll be adding the protein. And here we'll be using non-hydrolyzed Pure's pea protein, native protein. The protein is really going to be giving you that bite as well as trying to create the same protein content of dairy pizza cheese that customers look for. So I'm going to slowly add that into your thermal mix. And at this stage, I have a low temperature on both thermal mixes, around 100 degrees. Adding that in here. Take a second. I'm going to monitor the speed and making sure that both of the um, ingredients are getting fully hydrated in here. And like I said previously, it's really important to give these time. So check back in in five to ten minutes. Welcome back. After five minutes, our ingredients should be fully hydrated. So we're going to take a second. We're going to stop our protein and starch thermal mix so we can add our ingredients. Now into the thermal mix, we'll be adding our starch as well as a palm shortening into this left side. Your starch here at Cargill, we've looked at a blend of physically modified starches that we believe help create the best melt and bite of your vegan pizza cheese. It's important to create a blend because this is one of your most important components of your vegan pizza cheese. It can create and has a result, direct result in all of the rest of your components and functionality of your vegan pizza cheese. So we're going to add that in here. And next we have our palm shortening, which I found has some of the best um, melt functionality as well as helping to create the best bite on your final vegan pizza cheese. So we'll be adding that in here at this stage. And you'll give that another five minutes to hydrate. We've now waited five to ten minutes for the starch to fully hydrate with the palm oil shortening. Complete hydration of the starch is necessary for full functionality in the cheese. 
Due to the process tolerance of the starch blend we decided to use, we know the starch granules are well hydrated and not overcooked, even with a high heat load. So we can be confident that our, our starch is working at full functionality. Next, I'm going to add three more ingredients. I'm going to be adding my salt and my acid, which are there for flavor development. And I'll be adding my reducing sugar. It's very important that you use a reducing sugar in this step. If you don't use, use a reducing sugar, you won't be able to achieve the Mallard reaction between the protein and the reducing sugar to create browning when you're needing pizza cheese. Now that I've added these ingredients, we're going to wait for it to reach 185 for, and hold for 15 seconds. Now after we've given that an opportunity to hydrate for the starch and the protein stage, we can take a look at our hydrocolloid gum stage. As you can see here, it's created a gum and hydrocolloid ball that lets you know that it's fully hydrated and at full functionality. Looking at that ball, you can kind of tell that it's, it's going to be a completely different stage as you are shredding and um, putting the pizza cheese on the pizza. We'll take that here. And then we're going to slowly add this protein and starch stage to the gum and hydrocolloid stage. The mixture should kind of look like a cheese sauce. And we're going to add that in here. The ratio of the ingredients you chose to use at this stage is really key to, to attempting to get the functionality that you want out of your vegan pizza cheese. So as I'm adding this, I am scooping around the corners. Once again, it's very important you're getting every last bit of it in there. And so adding that in there, we are going to check our speed. You are mixing two different stages here, so the speed must be high to make sure everything's incorporated. All right, so we're gonna let that incorporate here. While that's incorporating, we'll talk about our lecithin and our oil, the oil that we'll be using today. Here we'll be using a deoiled lecithin. In the case of deoiled lecithin, you usually need to use about 30% more lecithin than oil-based lecithin. Here at Cargill, we've noticed that most vegan cheese customers are also looking for a clean label and label friendly option. So here we, um, at Cargill, we have grapeseed, soy, and sunflower lecithin. Today we'll be using sunflower lecithin because we believe that it has a great label friendly connotation that most customers look for. We'll also be using coconut oil. Cargill has a large global edible oil as a shortening portfolio, allowing us to evaluate a variety of single oils and combination of oils and shortenings. From these trials, we identified the best oils for this um, for, for this type of product. The characteristics that this oil will give us are melt, um, ability to be solid with rigid temperatures, and a very clean flavor profile. Coconut oils, as a, coconut oils have a very mild flavor profile, and they provide a good milk profile and oil release in your vegan pizza cheese. So I'll be taking that here, and I'll be adding my less than along with my oil. The oil, the lecithin is going to help um, with an emulsification as well as preventing your oil from coming out of the block. If you don't have the lecithin in there, you'll notice in your cheese blocks you get a layer of oil on top. So I'm slowly adding the coconut oil in here at this final stage. And I'm going to heat this once again to 185, um, holding for 10 seconds. Now that everything is fully incorporated and your less than oil have had time to create a stable emulsion, you're going to take your mixture and pour it into your loaf pan. It should look like a thick cheese sauce. It's very important that you take the time to freeze your cheese block and then wait at least 24 hours before you attempt to use it on any items. Today we looked at the ingredients needed to create the foundation for a vegan pizza cheese. The ratio of these ingredients ultimately determines the final cheese characteristics and can be adjusted to meet your product target. Check back in tomorrow as we bake this vegan pizza cheese. Thank you. After blast freezing our vegan pizza cheese and waiting for it to set in the refrigerator for 24 hours, we can now shred our vegan pizza cheese and put it on top of the pizzas. As you can see here, it shreds easily. This is due to the, start, the physically modified starches that we use, as well as the ratio of gums and hydrocolloids. It shreds easily, and you can sprinkle it on top of your pizza.
As you can see here, I have two pizzas today. I have a pizza where we are looking at the great melt of the vegan pizza cheese, and I have a pizza where we're looking at the great bite of the vegan pizza cheese. The bite in the vegan pizza cheese not only needs to have good melt and look nice on top of pizza, but the good bite is crucial. Dairy pizza cheese provides a distinct bite and chewiness when melted. To deliver consumer expectations of vegan pizza cheese, it's important to mimic the bite and the chewiness of dairy pizza cheese as closely as possible. Secondly, we're looking at the melt of the vegan pizza cheese. Many consumers look at cheese melt to determine doneness of their frozen pizzas. While some, look, look, some like the cheese to be fully melted with little to no browning, others like the cheese to be brown and crispy on the edges. Therefore, when developing a plant-based pizza cheese, it was important to achieve a milk profile similar to dairy cheese. Having the milk and browning makes the pizza look the most appetizing. Check back in in a little bit. We're gonna cook these and make these at 425 for 15 minutes. Thanks. Welcome back. We have our hot and ready pizzas here. Today I'd like to walk you through the difference formula between the two formulations we have on the table. We have our milk formulation and our bite formulation. In the case of the milk formulation, as you can see here, it has minimal shred identity and great spread. This is heavily influenced by the oils and shortenings that you decide to use, as well as the usage levels. In this, in this case today, we use coconut oil and palm oil shortening. Coconut oil has a great neutral flavor profile. In the case of the bite pizza, as you can see here, it still has some shred identity there. And unfortunately, you can't try, try it with us today, but trust me when I say that it has a great bite and cohesive texture. This is really due to the protein, the protein that you decide to use, as well as the usage level. Here at Cargill, we've taken the time to screen several different types of protein to determine the best protein and ratios that create the best bite for your consumer. The market for plant-based dairy alternatives continues to grow and develop with more mainstream consumers seeking out plant-based foods. With an increase in popularity comes the demand for plant-based foods to mimic their dairy counterpart. In the vegan cheese space, this includes vegan cheese to have the same melt, bite, stretch, and taste as dairy cheese. We know this is a big ask. Today, we demonstrate our ability to achieve melt and bite separate, in separate formulas using Cargill ingredient expertise and specific processing conditions. Here at Cargill, we, are, we create and develop deliver winning innovative, innovative solutions for our customers. If you have any questions or would like more information on how Cargill can help you develop a delicious vegan pizza cheese, please contact your Cargill account manager.